Hey buddy, welcome to Shark Jets, I'm Skid Viss. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a quick and simple level generator using Houdini and Unity. So let's get into that, but first, like and subscribe. Thank you, let's go. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. Now you're probably wondering why we're in Photoshop. And the reason is we're gonna need to make a blueprint basically of what our map can be based on. Uh, it'll make more sense here in a second, but I've created a new image. It's 20 pixels by 20 pixels, which is very tiny. Um, we don't need a lot of information. I'm gonna zoom this up real quick. And then I'm gonna make sure that the background is filled in white. So I'll just dump white on there real quick. And then I'll grab a pencil somewhere and just start drawing in black what the basis would be for the map. So uh, let's just assume that the map will have a big middle area and then a little hallway that leads to a little room over here, right? And then a little tiny hallway that leads to an itty bitty room cool and then we'll do the same up here just another big area cool 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 and of course one more why not I'll just do this all right so as you can see this is just like a very basic little level right the bare minimum you could make uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a ping to my desktop so I'll just export this as a ping to my desktop and call it tiny room. Great, now we're done here. Now we're going to Houdini next, right? Now, if you don't know what Houdini is, um, you've seen it. You just didn't know you've seen it. Houdini is a very powerful 3D modeling program. Um, it's more than likely been used in every blockbuster you've seen in the last five years. It is very, very powerful. Um, and the way it works, it's I think it's more of a, a 3D program for programmers instead of artists. Because instead of drawing things and pulling, you know, like some 3D programs, they'll give you like a lump of clay and you just pull and push and, you know, stretch and until you finally have what you want. Uh, with Houdini, you're actually just laying out a recipe for a machine to build something for you the machine being the Houdini renderer. Um, but you just tell it what you're trying to accomplish. And you don't need to understand Houdini. You don't need to know it to do this. Uh, what we're gonna do is just gonna be really simple. But Houdini is a great program and it's very integrated with game development. Um, it's used. It was used to make uh, the Spider-Man game for the PS4. Uh, I believe Ubisoft uses it on the Assassin's Creed games. Um, but it's very, very uh, integrated with video game development. So uh, you'll need Houdini. The link for that will be in the descriptions. Uh, and you'll also need something called the Side Effects Lab Tools. Now, Side Effects is the company that makes Houdini, and they have a special tool set specifically for video game development. Uh, so you can download that. The links will also be in the descriptions, and you'll need that because uh, none of what I'm about to do will work without that because we are building a level for our game. So now that we've got that covered, uh, let's go through uh, this interface real quick. Again, this is not a Houdini tutorial, but I just wanna show you the main uh, interface windows here. So this big window here is your view, your scene view. Anything that you're modeling will show up here. It's a lot like looking at a Unity screen, right? You've got uh, the same uh, grid laid out there and you, you'll You'll move around it the same way. You've got move, rotate, translate, all, the, all those same things that you would have in Unity. So it's not a big departure from what we're used to. So that's our scene view. We're not gonna be messing around in there. It'll just show us what we're doing. Uh, the second window here uh, is my node window, my network window. Um, this is where we'll be putting down the pieces. We're kind of using like Lego blocks um, to tell the machine what to do. I, I like to think of them as little recipes. Um, but they're called nodes, so we'll be laying down nodes telling the system what to do. 
Uh, and this third window over here is your parameters window. So basically every node I drop will have properties that I can change on it. Um, and so that's where I will be doing that. Really simple. Uh, once you get used to it, don't be intimidated by all this other stuff. We're not going to use any of that. It's not important to us right now. This program can do everything. So we're basically using a tank to kill a fly, but uh, it's going to be great. So uh, in this window, you drop down a node, like I said, to do things. The first node we need to create is a geo, which is a geometry, because we're going to create something with shapes. So I hit tab and I get this little menu and I can just type in geo and hit enter. And then I get this little ghost object, which lets me decide where I want to put it. I'll just put it right here in the middle. And that created a geometric object, which as you can see has all the same properties as something in Unity would. You can translate, rotate, scale it, whatever. So we're gonna double click on it and that'll take us inside of that node. So we can add more nodes inside of a node. And here's where we're gonna get to uh, the meat and potatoes. So I'm gonna hit tab again and hit WFC. Now WFC FC stands for wave, for wave Form Collapse. And it is one of the gaming tools that they uh, are, are working on for uh, Houdini. So we're gonna need uh, two grids. So it starts off, we've got these different things here. We're gonna need two of these actually. Uh, but the first one we're gonna need is the lab, Labs WFC Initialize Grid. So we'll click on that, put that down here. And this is gonna tell us how big our grid is. So as you can see the properties for it over here on the right, it's gonna be a, a, a grid with 20 rows and 20 columns. So if I zoom out with the mouse wheel here, you can see uh, navigation is just like in, in Unity. So you can see this grid has a uh, 20 by 20, right? Just like we want. So that one's good. Now we wanna make a copy of that. Uh, we can either drop another one or just hit Alt and drag to create a copy of one that exists. So now we have two of them. This one's different. This one's gonna, we're gonna click this from texture checkbox here, and it's gonna ask us for a file. So here's where we'll plug in that image that we created. So here's my tiny room. I'll just throw that in there. And now right off the bat, you can see that it took that image and it assigned it to pixels on this grid or squares on this grid. So you can already see that it took that and it knows what to do with it. But we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little more. That's not enough. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is add that uh, that wave, the other waveform collapse item. So we'll just do a tab, WFC, and we've got this labs 2D wave function, wave function, I said waveform, it's wave function collapse, and drop that here. Now the way this works, it's like you're building a flow chart. Um, everything has these little dots on the bottom or in some on the top, and that's how you connect things together. So we'll take the one that has just the grid size, 20 by 20, and we'll draw a little line to this piece here. Now that's connected to this. And then we'll take the one that has the image and drag it over here, All right? So now the two things are connected to this. Now another thing about uh, Houdini is when you're viewing this screen over here on the left, it's only going to show you whatever has this blue mark on the side of it. So if I come over here and click this, it's just a grid. If I come over here and click this, it's the image transposed over a grid. And if I come over here and click this, it will be this component using those two things. Now, so this wave function collapse component node has a bunch of settings, and this is where you can randomize what your level is gonna look like. So by default, it has a pattern size of three, which means that it's taking this image that we created and it's breaking it into three by three chunks and it's creating a random map based on those three by three chunks. So if you come over here, you can see it made a nice random map. If you don't like that, you can play with this number and get smaller chunks. See how they're now one by one pieces as opposed to three by three pieces. Um, and then if you again don't like the way it looks, you can also play with the seed here. The seed is just a randomizer. So you can keep messing with this until you get a map that looks good to you. Uh, this looks good enough, why not? 
So let's move on to the next thing. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is just a, a thing for Unity. Uh, it has to do with resizing things. So I'm gonna drop another node by hitting tab and it's called a transform. I'm sure you've heard that term before. And it works just like the transform in Unity. It has translate, rotate, scale, all that stuff. So we're gonna drop this node into that one. All right, so now this is the thing that's happening. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna scale it, right? Because this grid, if we were to import this grid into Unity, it would be very small. So I'm gonna scale it up by a factor of five, just so that it's bigger in Unity. So I'm gonna zoom back out. So now we have a nice big uh, tile map. So then uh, we're gonna add what's called a Wang Tile Decoder. Wang Tile Decoder, yeah. So let's hit uh, tab and type in Wang. And we got two of them, that's why I got confused. There's the decoder and the sample. And I'll explain them as I go along, but right now we just need a decoder. So we'll drop that down here. All right, and then we'll pull this into that one and set that one as active. There are no settings that we need to change here. Um, the only thing we need to pay attention to is our grid size. For instance, here our grid size is 20 by 20. The Wang tile decoder needs to match that. So it also has rows and columns. So if you set your first grid to 50 by 50, you need to set this to 50 by 50. There are ways to tie these together, but I'm not gonna go into that because that's a little more advanced. Um, so we'll just move this up. And now we'll need the samples, right? And so we do this, tab again, wang again, and bring in the samples. Now, this is the cool thing here. Um, you don't have to change anything in it, but like I said, you can have nodes inside of nodes. So for instance, we're inside that first geometry node. So if I hit uh, U to back out, this is our one node and we're inside of that node and we have more nodes. Now this Wang tiles is also uh, a node that has nodes in it. We don't need to know what what's happening inside it, but I do wanna show you what is happening. So I'm gonna double click that and uh, you, to see all this. you can see this little tiny village over there. So I'm gonna zoom in because we've scaled everything to five. Now this is every possible combination of corners that can happen in your template. So for instance, this first one here is what a floor would be. It's all the way at the bottom. You can see that it's very thin. And this one over here at the top left would be a wall, right? So wherever there would be a wall in your template, it would use that. Wherever there's a floor, it would use that. And then the rest of them are just variations of that. Here's a floor with a corner post. Here's a floor with a corner post on the bottom. Here's a floor with two corner posts. Here's a floor with a, ball, a wall on the right, a wall on the bottom. And there's 47 different combinations uh, of what can possibly be in your layout. So this is what we're gonna be using to populate our random level. So I'll go ahead and hit U again to back up out of this, go back into our original view, zoom back out, because I zoomed in too far. Whee! All right, cool. So now we gotta join these two. And we're gonna do that with something called copy to points. So basically this Wang tile decoder is determining all these little points, all these dots, what is gonna go where, right? Um, based on our, our wave function collapse. It's basically gonna take that, and if it's a black line or black dot, it's gonna put something in it. If it's a white dot, it's gonna put something else in it. So, uh, and then it's gonna compute whether it's an angle or whether it's in the middle, um, all that stuff, it's gonna do it all for us. So we will need to bring this in to a, uh, we need to merge these two. So we'll do a copy to points. So I'll type in copy to points and drop that down there. And that one of course has two things that it needs. It needs what do you wanna copy and where do you wanna copy it to? So we'll bring the left side over here or the right side over here and the left side over here and then hit copy to points. And 
as you can see, it puts something in every pixel or every dot or every grid cell. Um, but it basically put everything in every grid cell. So we need to make a little change here. There's this uh, attribute on the copy to points called piece attribute. And that basically says what piece do you want to put in every cell. So we'll change this to name because they're all named. And as you can see right there, we have a level, right? Uh, we also want to do one thing, right? If you, if you click on any node, there's this little eye icon here and it tells you basically more details about that node. Now, we're creating, by doing this, we're creating 7,000 points, 5,000 primitives, 23,000 vertices, and 5,000 polygons. Now that might be a lot, right? If you wanna put it on a mobile game or on a mobile uh, device or something like that, you might wanna check these and be as efficient as possible. And one of the things we can do and should do is with the copy to point, it can create instances instead of just creating copies, right? So we'll click this pack and instance check mark. And if we check this again, you'll see our numbers have dropped, right? Because there's only 47 different things that can be possibly used. So we don't need, you know, uh, 20 by 20 copies of those 47 objects. We can just use those 47 objects once and just duplicate them wherever we need. So that reduces our points primitives, vertices, all down to 400, which is great. All right, we're done, right? Now we need to import this into Unity. So we will go back up one to our main object here, our main node, and we wanna turn this into what's called a digital asset. So we do that by right-clicking, and right there it says Create Digital Asset. So when we do that, we get this uh, message saying, hey, where do you want to save it? Uh, I'm going to save it in, uh, well, I'll save it on my, I have a folder already for this, this project in Unity. So I will just uh, find my Unity projects. What's this called? Quick Levels. All right. So I'll create a, a folder. Can I create a folder with this? Maybe. All right, so I will just throw this in here, I guess, in assets. Why not? So we'll save it in there, we'll give it a name, we can call this whatever we want, but I'm just gonna call it Geo1 for now, why not? And hit accept, we'll get another window. Uh, we can say destroy all spare parameters, basically saying there's a bunch of stuff on here we're not using, so we'll destroy that. And then we get another window, which is where we can assign properties to this object. But we're not going to mess with any of that. So we'll just hit apply and accept, and we're done. You'll see this little padlock here that lets you know it's a digital asset. So now we go back and go into Unity, right? And you'll see it in my assets right there. There's the Skid Geo. Um, if I were to try to use it now, it's not going to work. It's uh, it doesn't do anything, but uh, like I said, Houdini is made for making games. So when you install it, it installs this Unity package here for you. And you can use that whenever you want to bring in the Houdini engine, which is what you need in Unity to use Houdini objects or digital assets. So I'm going to go ahead and double click this and nothing's going to happen. So I'm going to try to bring that in here. Is that going to work? Yeah, so now it'll ask me to import this Unity engine so I can import that. When it's done, we'll have a new menu item up here called Houdini Engine. Um, if we wanted to load an HDA file, a digital asset, we can do it here, but I've already put it in our assets folder. So all we need to do now is drop that into the scene. And as you can see, our map is here. It's huge as it should be. Uh, we've got, this object has this Houdini engine uh, panel here. So you can keep going back into Houdini and making changes. So, so for instance, if I go back and I just change the, uh, the randomization here and make it look like a different level, right? So it's different now. So then I go back up and save my changes here. 
And just for giggles, I like to go in and save the same thing up here. And then I go back into Unity, and if I hit this Rebuild button, it should change the way it looks. So you can keep making iterations while, while you're working and uh, see how they look in Unity. Now, uh, the one thing I have installed in this Unity project, it's a new Unity project, but I do have Game Creator, which I've mentioned in a different video, which just lets me get up and running quickly uh, when making prototypes. So uh, I'm going to create a new player and put it in the wrong place, but I'll move him up here. So here's my player character that Game Creator gives me. And here's the problem that we're going to run into real quick. Um, if I hit play, whee! So okay, our, our level doesn't have any uh, colliders on it. So um, we'll come back to that in a different video. But for now, what we can just do is uh, just throw a plane on the ground here. And just scale that bad boy up. Right, to fit this level here. Close enough, right? All right, so now if I come in here, we should not fall through the floor anymore. We should land on it, and now we can run around. Uh, like I said, we, we are still, we don't have colliders on these walls. So for now, you could like manually throw colliders on there. But the one thing, when we went in here and uh, in Houdini and we told it to uh, over here we told it to pack an instance so now we can go in to unity and if we look at this geo object we'll see it has a bunch of things inside it so we can actually find all different shapes that are are in there so see all these and you can actually go through and either add geometry to these or colliders to these, or you can actually replace them. Like if you didn't want, uh, you know, let's find a good, good outside shape here. So okay, let's look at this one real quick. So these are all basically prefabs almost. So if I click on these, so you can actually go through and move these. So you could actually go ahead and replace this with a model if you want. Um, do that all manually. But in my next video, I'm going to show you how to how to take all these points and convert them into assets that you might already have, and just replace these generic bricks with your actual models or prefabs. All right, there you have it. Like I said, quick and easy. Uh, there's a lot of potential for this. Everybody's using it. You should too. It's really easy. Really great. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Um, anyways, uh, if you found this helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe. I put the link in the details to Houdini and the labs uh, and anything else you might need. And we'll keep working on this uh, to make uh, better levels and uh, hopefully you'll stick around for that. So thanks again for watching. I'm still Skidvis. Peace out.